What's going on there, guys? We back with another one. And today I want to talk a little bit about Penny Hardaway and Mikey Williams and why it's important for kids to choose coaches that truly care about them. We all know Mikey Williams got arrested. Uh, five firearm charges, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he's, he's facing up to six months in the pen. And he's supposed to go to Memphis this year and be a Memphis Tiger and play under coach Penny Hardaway. And Penny came out today and he had some supportive words for Mikey Williams while he said he- I was a Prop 48 and I was sitting out and I was trying to find avenues to, to stay in shape. So every Sunday, uh, this area gym in my old neighborhood would be open and we would go over and have some really intense basketball games. So that night we went to play, it was a Sunday night and it was me, my cousin and another friend. We left the gym went into the neighborhood, dropped my cousin off at home, and we were headed back to the University of Memphis campus uh, for me to go back. Cousin phones me and said, hey man, you know what? I left my wallet in the back of the vehicle. It must've fell out of my bag. I need it because my mom wants me to go to the store. I gotta drive and my license is in there. So I said, cool. So we turn around and man, I can't even make this up. This is like a movie. We park in front of my aunt's house. And then all of a sudden this car creeps by us and I'm noticing the car. Not really, you know, I'm naive. It drove down the road and I could see down this road. It went about three homes down, turned around, came back and went right past us. Me and my friend are talking casually. We're not even thinking this car is even like sitting there like being predators and waiting on us to get out. So I'm turning to talk to him and I see headlights and I look back, it's the same car. Comes by us again, makes a left on the same street, turns around in the same driveway that it did the first time and it still hasn't clicked. Now I call myself like a, a, a guy that's aware that has some really good awareness. The car comes back past us. And by this time, I'm trying to call my cousin to tell him to come outside to get the wallet. He doesn't answer the phone. So now we get out of the car, slam the doors to open the hatch up to get the wallet to take it inside. And all of a sudden we hear the brake screech. I look up, it's the same exact car. Now I reenacted in my mind, like a movie going backwards. Go back to them passing us. Go back to them making the left, go back to them making the um, turn around in the, in the third driveway and passing us. And then I went, oh, it was an oh shit moment. Honestly, it was. I was like, they're about to do something. So he rolls down the window and I looked in there and it was like, it seemed like six guys were in this car. Now my heart is racing. I'm like, this is, this is not good. And then he asked my friend, can you tell me how to get to Bartlett? And Bartlett is one of the richer neighborhoods, which is like 30 minutes away from us. And when he said that, I knew what was about to happen. As soon as my friend started explaining, because he could feel it too, they jumped out of the car, they had their hats down low and they put the gun to my head. I didn't even look at them and they just fell to the ground. So they robbed us, robbed the truck, hopped in the car and then drove down the street. Got about, mm, about a hundred feet away. And I guess they thought about that they should have killed us because they didn't know if we saw their faces. So they started shooting back to where we were. And the first initial shots that rang out, I ducked behind the car. And then something told me to jump in, into the car because the hatch was up. And right before I jumped into the um, the hatch, man, I got hit in the foot. So the bullet ricocheted off the ground and hit me in the foot. And then when I jumped up, I was like, I got hit. He was like, where? You're lying. My, my friend, I was like, no, I got hit in the foot. And when I looked at the side of my shoe, it was like a little hole. And then when I took my shoe off, it was like a blood stain now. And the, the, the bullet was lodged in my foot and they didn't come out of the other side. And by this time, now my cousin comes out, my aunt comes out because he goes and knocks on the door. They call the ambulance and then I get to the hospital. Obviously, we're still in the movie because the, 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 the stuff, the, the word that I get from the doctor where the bullet is lodged right under my foot in there, it broke all, it went through the, uh, the small toe and then broke all of these bones and then lodged between the big toe and the second toe that I probably wouldn't be able to play basketball again for the way that the bullet hit my foot. So man, I had to share that story. Just, it's, it's one thing for you to have a coach that comes and recruits you, tells you everything you wanna hear, even will give you the playing time they promise to give you, as long as there's nothing that's sketchy that happens in your life. Uh, there's another thing to have a coach that cares about you, even if things go sour and they are cognizant of the fact that 
they're going to a certain environment to recruit a talent that may have been exposed to certain things and they may have some of those traits. You know what I'm saying? Because they were once amongst those people. You know, I'm pretty sure Penny knows people that were just as talented as him on the basketball floor when he was younger, and they didn't get that break. They got in trouble. He probably sees it from that lens, seeing some of the ones that went to the penitentiary, uh, some of the older uh, D-boys he looked up to that could play ball when they were younger, but they just got into the streets. He sees it from that lens, whereas uh, – uh, I don't want to use – I'm going to use football, whereas Nick Saban sees a talented man that he can help get to the NFL, but he doesn't see a talented man that may make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? That that's that would be the difference. And I'm not saying that kids should just all freely go out and make all these bad decisions. That, decisions, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying if something arises and – it's not a repeat type thing. You should do everything in your power to help that young man because that is your main job. Not trying to get players to the NBA or play professionally. That's secondary, yes. And making sure they do what they need to do in the classroom. That's all good. But you're helping them grow as a young man. That's at least what recruiting used to be. You used to have to promise the parents that you was going to help the kid become a young man or young woman, whatever the sport. You know, that, that used to be a part of the agreement. When that don't work out, you know, that's that was like betrayal one time. Uh, we know some players ain't going to be as good as other players, but helping them become a young man is key or a young woman. So I, I think Penny is doing a good job with that. I think the, the players love him. He's played at the level they aspire to get to, and he's from where they're from. And that's what makes him one of the best uh, coaches in college basketball. I do take into account wins and losses, but I also look at the relationship of the players with their coach, man. And that says a lot about a coach. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Should Mikey still be a part of the Memphis Tigers team? Or y'all feel like Penny should let him go? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, peace.